Welcome to Mixed Media Creations with me, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual. We're back with our gel plate and we are creating gel prints with things we find in our kitchen. And here's a sneak peek of the tools that we will be using to create awesome gel prints. Be warned, this video is long, so you may want to speed it up. Hit the subscribe button and select the option to be notified of upcoming new videos. Hi everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual here, and today we are doing the next in our series of jelly printing. And today we are going to use things that you can find in the kitchen, repurposed from the kitchen. Um, so you might have things in your kitchen that you're not using that you could repurpose for this because um, they're going to get all painty so you really don't want to be taking it back and forth. Or you can often find these in a thrift store. So we're just going to get started with that. So again I have some papers that have just kind of a base coat of color. Some of the prints that I've created in my other videos that I'm thinking you know they're not done yet I could do I can add more to them because while I'm showing these each separately you can definitely intermingle these together. So we are just going to get started with this and again I'm just using a mixture of paint. Actually, I don't want that. I want some of the pink in here. Adding a little bit of Martha Stewart paint. I need a few of these colors. My uh, for my planner spreads, I need kind of this peachy, corally kind of tone. So we're going to go with that. Now one of the things, and I've never done this, so this is we're going to learn together, is using aluminum foil. Now this is Betty Crocker aluminum foil that I bought at the dollar store. It is exactly that dollar store. You never want to use anything on your plate that is sharp. So what I'm going to do is just kind of crinkle this up. Just to get all that interesting texture, and I have to the noise. So we have, you know, with all the crinkles, and I'm just going to press that in. Now it moved, but I don't think that's going to hinder anything. And I'm just grabbing this print from before to see if I can use this in any way, shape, or form as a stamp, if anything's going to come off of it. And it may not. I don't know. So, very, very, very little came off. But, you know what? It adds interest, adds a layer. It's all I'm interested in. So I'm just going to pull this off and we'll see. So it's a very nice base layer of which you can put more things in. And I like that. It's very organic, very interesting. So let's just do another one and then we'll move on to the next the next thing. <laughs> Use some in here. Now I've got some pink and, and that's still on there so it, it may show up, it may not. It, at some point in time that's all going to pull up. I, I don't tend to clean my jelly print plate until I'm done. Before I put it away I do, I do clean it. Some people don't. Personal choice. Oh, 
Okay, so let's just try this again. And I'm just pressing in a little bit more. And you know what? I'm going to pull, put this off on here. Oh, actually, maybe on the blue one. And you can see very, very faintly that it's there. So it's just going to add to the overall interest. The nice thing about this is when this is done, you don't have to store it. Throw it away. You can grab a new sheet the next, the next day, right? So we're going to pull that. And as you can see, we got the pink around the edges. But, you know, I really like that very organic texture that we have on there. So depending on how much you press. Here I didn't press as much, so you have less marks. Here you have more. So you can go back and do, do it in various ways, shapes, and forms to get different forms. Now in the same drawer I have my plastic wrap. Now you've seen me do plastic wrap technique with acrylic paints, with watercolors, with all sorts of mediums. Yellow on here. And I'm going to add some of this metallic Martha Stewart. Oh, that's yum. We're just going to pull. This out, and much like what you do when you put it onto your page, we're going to do it here. And then we're just going to smoosh this around, get those crinkles and wrinkles. That's what we want. You want, that's what's going to make the interest, okay? I'm going to pull this one out again, and I'm going to put this wet onto here. And we do have some interesting patterning, very interesting on here. Recycling paper. Again, very nice. And here it's picked up some of the purple and some of the pink. And from there, I really like this. This would be a very nice background for an art journal page. We're just going to add some green. A couple different shades of green. One of my favorite things to do is to add two tone, two colors or shades of the same color. It just it's a quick, easy way of adding more interest. Now we had some of the texture was still on the plate. From before. Now I'm going to use this same one. Because I'm thinking if some of that paint is wet, it may transfer onto there. And what's going to happen? Right? If you ask the question, try it. Uh, you know, I think it's we need to em empower ourselves to, you know, if we have a question, try it out. I mean, unless something's toxic or you're you're dealing with, you know, chemicals or whatever, um, you know, what could go wrong? It's paper, paint, like. You'll, you'll learn. Okay, so I'm just going to pull that off and I'm just going to put it onto this other green one that's here. And it's just going to be another layer. Do you have to do this part? No, you can skip that part if you don't, if you have nothing that you want to put it on. Sometimes I put it on a blank sheet and I take that sheet and I keep adding 
all the kind of off. That was just kind of filled in and added some interest to what was existing. Okay, so we have that. Now again, all of these materials that you're using, that I'm using singly, can be used with other things. Oh, so loving. We've got some of that yellow and orange coming through and we've got two tones of green. Really liking that effect. You know, which one do you like better? Do you like the plastic wrap? Both of those are the plastic wrap or did you like this? Very different effects. Okay, so moving right along, what else is in our kitchen? Well, one of the things that we have in a kitchen, and actually I found this in a, um, it's a Tupperware lid, and I bought this at a thrift store, and I just thought, oh, texture, right? How cool is that? Anything that's texturized, so, you know, flip things over, look at the bottoms of things, because we have that one. I also bought this at the same time, and it's just a plastic tray. Um, most times this sits in my art studio and it holds my gesso and Mod Podge and all of my mediums, but on the underneath is what I use for my jelly plate. So we're going to do prints using that. So, um, I'm just trying to do a few different colors here. For you now I've gone away from doing two tones of one color this red and purple together kind of make a burgundy it's just it is a rich lovely color which I really like um, again I discovered it doing jelly printing and uh, now I deliberately use it and I'll use this even on my journal pages. So first things first, we're going to take this. Now I'm going to see if I can get a page that I can... So I have this one that I did with the large bubbles. So, you know, I'm just saying, okay, you know what? I'm going to pretend that one's not done. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to press. And then I'm going to press off on the side and you get kind of the sun ray kind of thing and then I'm going to press and press try not to move it but if it moves it's just going to have a bigger ray And you can overlap this as much So I'm going to say we're done. So there you can see the interest that is added to this. So if you did the same thing with different colors, you could just layer just this onto there. You know what I need? I need another one right here. 
<laughs> so, and now we're just going to pull this print. Now I had a lot of paint on there and it's probably a good thing because it, it takes some time to go back and forth and back and forth. Now look at that. Isn't that amazing? I love the colors. It picked up some of the green and the brown from underneath and I'm okay with that. It's not my fave but that is like a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful beginnings and background. Okay, so let's just do one more because I've promised you two of each. And here I'm going to mix this craft paint blue with silver. I'm into the shine today. Got it very, very, very wet. Maybe a little too wet, I'm thinking, but that's perfectly okay. Very off. So I'm just going to move this a little bit this way so that you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Um, Now, if you wanted this sun rays pattern on a journal page, you could totally bring out your jelly jelly plate and, you know, get this all inked up with paint and um, So there we have, I don't know if you can see, but it's got that shimmer. That'd be nice with maybe some of the iridescent paint, the Pepio iridescent stuff. But just added an interesting layer of color. Oh, we've got some interesting stuff on the back of this one. <laughs> Oops. I'll leave that. very tie dyes. So we have those with the lid. Now we've got some pattern on here. I don't know if you can see that. They're left on and it's definitely the silver. So I want something that's going to bring that up. So I'm going to actually go for my darkest purple. which is my Diox purple. I'm thinking that might look very nice. We're gonna try to clean this off. Now, of course, if, if some of this is going very too slow for you, definitely, you know, hit the gear down below and you can adjust the speed, but you're gonna to want to turn off the uh, the volume because otherwise you're going to hear me doing my chipmunk imitation. Okay, so we are simply going to pull this off, right? Because we're not going to waste anything. Parts of this I may speed up 
But again, you can go to the gear and slow it down. Okay, so hopefully it picks up. You can see that pattern in that silver. Very interesting effect. We kind of have the swirl with how I put the paint on, but that's all good. So you'll never look at Tupperware again. And I'm sure my mom is just shaking <laughs> if she would see me doing this with her Tupperware lid. It's not hers, it's not hers. So let's try this, right? This is plastic, I'm not using fine crystal here at all. Doesn't that just look like all sorts of yumminess and fall? Kind of what I was going for. And again, I'm, you know, just bringing off on sheets here and um, these will be used. These will end up back in my file folders as well and I use them for collaging um, a paper piecing on the art journals. So again, you have whatever pattern. Now it has kind of legs here, so I kind of want to avoid that. Now I don't remember if this one... Okay, I'm going to try to put it on here. I'm going to keep adding layers to that. I don't know if this if you're going to get enough of a contact. No, not at all. But that's okay. And I didn't press everywhere, so I'm trying to do that now. But if you can't make contact that way, you can put it this way, right? Because of the legs. And then you get those little, little greedly bits. Here, right? there's more than one way to skin a cat. And look at that interest that's just being added, you know, by adding whatever little color bits. Isn't that absolutely lovely, right? We've got the reds and the... You know what, I'm going to put some blue in here. Very strange color, right? <laughs> Why would she do that? And... For these, to make these videos, I've... I've kind of reorganized my room and put every all the paint so it's fairly close. I'm just going to put this off because I kind of got a little too much there. A little too heavy handed with the blue and I don't want the blue to overpower the gold. You can see here the brayering off sheet is looking quite lovely. <laughs> I swear sometimes they are the nicest ones. I'm just going to try to press a little harder. And I'm going to
when I have my collage papers, I like having a little bit of gold in with all the different colors because I might add just that piece um, just because it has gold in it. Yum, again. And we got some of that brown and orange coming through from the, from the end, but isn't that beautiful? So there we go. Didn't do much for stamping off, but definitely um, get some interesting effects and patterns. Now again, if you use this in combination with other things, you're just going to get all the more. Now this, you can buy stencils like this or masks like this. This is the bottom of a plastic paper plate holder. So again, you have some interesting texture. And again, it'll be different, a little bit different depending on which side you use. So you know what? We, of course, have to play with both sides. So I've got a couple blue sheets here and green. So I'm gonna pick something that is going to go well on both of those. Okay, so I'm gonna put some pink. It's a little hard to press down. And this is just, I'm not getting, pulling off any paint with this. I'm just using it so that my fingers aren't getting all painty. That allows me to get a nice mark. Now, again, putting off, there's just very little there. Nothing really significant, but it will look great when you add it all together, right? Now had I pulled that, maybe the next one will pull onto a colored back sheet and you'll get kind of a two-toned effect. So, now let's... Okay, so we'll put it on this one. So wherever, I'm thinking, wherever the white is here, you're going to see the pink show through. So we want a color that's going to go well with the pink. And you know what? I'm gonna use some teal. A little bit of this blue. Got some greeblies there. I'm going to try using the other side this time. Now it's flatter, so it may actually work better. And you know what? I'm going to print off onto here with the blues. 
And look at that. That actually, because it's flat, is making a pretty nice stamp. Move this over. So there we go, that's added a very nice, interesting kind of layer. And you can actually continue doing this with the different colors with the same tool. So this one we're going to, you know, I'm not going to put it on that one. I think it's gonna to be too lovely the way it is. I don't wanna put pink. So yeah, the flat side actually works better, which I'd never used up until today. So that gives us some interesting, and you can keep playing with that and have fun. So something else that's in your kitchen, and this isn't gonna be really a mark making thing, but you can put your gel prints onto coffee filters, whether you have this kind of coffee filter, whether you have this one. Um, you know, we have a Keurig right now, so we don't use either of those. So what I'm gonna do is just grab some of the other, the mark making um, ones that we've already had. I'm just gonna add some of this yellow. I don't know, I think that might not work too well, but yeah. Ooh, a little psychedelic. It's going to print off on. It's a very autumny color. Now, I love these ones when they get, um, use them for collaging. They're so incredibly wonderful. So, so it'd be nice to have some pattern on them. And I've never really gel, gel printed straight on them. I'm just going to take this one on this side and this one. I'm 
Yeah, so you can see how It's kind of a fiddly kind of thing to get the texture and the colors on here, but it will totally um, be worth it when I have these to collage with because this material is so, 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 so great. Um, I'm thinking that would be an interesting... All those greebly bits. putting per blue on. My reasoning for that is orange and blue are complementary colors, so they're going to look really good together. Hmm. I should have put that on the <laughs> on the Is kind of very interesting as backgrounds go with those little bit of oranges and that kind of stuff like you can never create this background just without the gel gel plane right you can go you know to art stores and buy catalyst blades you can buy texture combs and different things and these I've purchased but you can make your own or use stuff in the kitchen. Now, this was something again, this is from Tupperware, and you know, the edge is this. Now, I bought this at the thrift store, so I can use this to make marks. This is from my Cuisinart from my Griddler, and again, I can use it to very gently, I, you know, this is a little harder plastic, so you gotta be careful, you don't wanna scratch your gel plate. You don't wanna use anything that's gonna have a hard edge. Now, you can make your own. You can cut from using credit cards and just cut different patterns. You can look at what kind of catalyst tools they have, what kind of texture ones they have, and cut it. And I made these two-sided and stuff. Or you can cut your own, like I did here. This was a Betty Crocker um, spatula that I, you know, bought at the dollar store. And so I've just cut on each side. So what I did there, and I'm just going to give you a little bit of a sample. I won't be doing the whole thing. And just very carefully now I'm just going to put, I want this kind of space, so I'm going to zoom in so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I want this kind of the same, so then I'm just going to cut in and out. And just remove little. And you can vary it, you can have it totally random, you know, um, and see what you can come up with. I mean, use your imagination. Now, this isn't from the kitchen per se, but it is a squeegee from, from the shower. Same thing. You can simply take and Cut. 
green one. So I'm going to finish this and then we'll come back and we'll use these on the plate. Okay, so I am back and we're just going to have some fun with the combs that we just created. I got lots of little dry bits in here, so I should take some time and wipe off my gel plate, but you know what? We're not going to because it's all part of the fun. So this one just made the comb and so that's what we're getting on this one. And then depending on how you move it, so let's just pull these off. see how that's just adding some lovely you know and if I add a color to this you know uh, with leftover paint at some point in time or another jelly print I'm gonna just gonna let this dry a bit and then I'm going to actually pull up on, on color here okay so what color am I going to put on top of this. So well, maybe we'll put pink here. And I'm going to make the suggestion again that when you are jelly printing, gel printing, printing, just take one or two of your tools and just really play with it and experiment with it and see what it can do. So let's see. You can go that way. And you can do whatever you want with it. You know, it's just a matter of taking the time to play with it. And see what you can come up with. But you guarantee that it's going to be one of a kind, right? Let's that's kind of I don't know what's going to happen but that's the fun Loving that. 
and it was actually a silicone lifter and I cut out the other half because again we have this wonderful texture inside here and I gave the other half to my friend when you find texture you always get one for yourself and one for your friend it's kind of the way the rules go right I'm just going to and a shot of a couple shots of red here there's some metallic in here And so what you're just going to do is just press, kind of like little jellyfish actually if you get the whole thing. Now again, I could be, and I didn't, putting on here, pressing off onto do some of this here. With printing on instead of starting right from scratch. So I have this kind of orangey paper and I'm going to zoom out so you can see what's going on over here. And I'm going to take and then press. And you can see the pattern that you get when you print off. So again, that's just going to add some really interesting effects. Now, if you want it, you could cut that out, glue it with Gorilla Glue or Eileen's Tacky Glue, and glue it to a block or several layers of cardboard. So again, this is something dollar store. You know, walk up the aisles and look at things in light of the texture that they have. And there you have it. Isn't that lovely? So I'm just adding some black to this and maybe some silver just to add shine. I don't know what's going to happen here. green paper and I'm going to stamp off on the side with
again, we've got some interesting pattern going on. I'm thinking this would be really nice markings to be putting on a bunch of these that may get colored later. When I add, you know, paints onto this at after when I'm doing my art journal pages. Now I didn't, I went all over the place here, and this is pretty dry right now. So I'm wondering, but we'll try, we'll take a print, and it may be too dry. So we'll be dealing with getting a cleanup print, but we'll see. So completely lovely. It's kind of got a pewter feel to it when you added that silver to to the black and now there's you can see that there's a lot left on here and you know I just looked at the red and I'm thinking you know what that might look really nice on the red so that's what I'm going to use to pick up all those crusty bits So go to your kitchen, look at, or the thrift store, or the dollar store in the kitchen department, and look for things like this that have texture, that have interest that can make texture. Get out your gel plate and have fun. Just play. You're going to find some things are going to work and you are going to love them. So let's see. So for collaging, this is perfect because I don't want just red. I want some interest in it. So be sure to check out the pictures of all the prints with their tools at the end. And know that what I've gotten in a couple of prints showing you each of the tools, the sky's the limit. Play with them and come up with your own wonderful things. And if you come up with a discovery and go, oh, that's so cool, please come and share it on my Facebook group, All Things Mixed Media Creative Katie. The link is in the description box below. I hope you're having as much fun with your gel plate as I am with mine. See you for the next video.